Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about my favorite books that I read in 2021. Baby, baby. So I did not have a set number for this list, I just picked out books that I can't stop thinking about that I gave five stars to this year. I definitely gave more than 13 books, the 13 books that are on this list, I gave more than 13 books five stars in the year of 2021. However, these 13 books I would say are my favorite of the entire year. I don't know why I picked 13, but 13 is just the number I came up with. <laughs> That's what we ended up with, y'all. So there's no particular order to this list, except maybe the last four books are my favorite books of the year, but um, those will be towards the end of the video. So let's dive right on into these books. If you love any of these books as well, or if some of these books were your favorites of the year too, please let me know down in the comments below so I don't feel alone and I have somebody to gush to. Of course, I have to talk about A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. It's crazy to think that this book came out this year because this seemed like a lifetime ago. Honestly, a whole semester of college has come and gone for me. We had snowpocalypse during this time. I'm from Texas, snowpocalypse, snow vid, whatever you want to call it. It was happening when I got this book. I read this book. I have a whole reading blog for it if you want to check it out. I read this book in 24 hours during snowpocalypse with no power, no heat, in the freezing cold with snow when we are not used to snow at all. It was a wild ride. I was laying in bed with a billion blankets with a hat, gloves, socks, multiple layers on. <laughs> Which is honestly a hard things to find if you're a Texan because you don't normally have all of those clothing items. <laughs> anyway, long story short, this is Sarah J Maas's new release um, in the A Court of Thorns and Roses universe. In case you have not read the Akatar trilogy and are wanting to, I'm not going to tell you who or what this book is about because I hate spoilers. If I were you and I hadn't read it yet, I would not want to be spoiled, but this was just a wild ride. If you want to know my in-depth thoughts, real time of reading this, be sure to check out that reading vlog, but this is definitely, definitely a memorable experience to me. This book was great and I need to do a reread very, very, very soon. In 2021, I ended up reading the majority of the Immortals After Dark series by Cressley Cole. I started in 2020. I actually started the first book last year on my birthday, on my uh, 22nd birthday. That's how I spent my 22nd birthday was reading the entire first book in the series. And so I don't remember how many books I read in 2020, but I read the majority of them in 2021. And a lot of those books could be on this list, y'all. Cressley Cole's paranormal books are insanely good. They will suck you in and they are just so realistic for them being paranormal books. So I'm just gonna talk about one today because that whole series could be on this list. I'm gonna talk about the latest book in this series, book number 17. There's 17 books in this series. The latest book might be one of my favorites or Demon from the Dark, but that's book number seven. And I don't remember if I've read, if I read that one this year or last year, but anyway. Wicked Abyss by Cressley Cole. I adore this one. <laughs> Book number 17. This is kind of a Hades and Persephone-esque story, I would say. This is about Cian and Calliope. So Cian is kind of this leader or king of this underworld realm, somewhat, sort of. Um, he's ruler of a realm, kind of like a hell dimension. And because of this, he's slowly starting to turn into what he is perceived as. He's starting to look like the devil, essentially. So he's starting to turn red skinned, horns, tail, the whole shebang, you know, when you think of the devil, he's turning into that and he's not very happy about it. And a couple hundred years ago, he found his fated mate, but his fated mate basically ruined his life. He hasn't been the same since. And he's been seeking, he wants to seek retribution for what she did to him. And then he finds out that Calliope, who is a fae princess, is the reincarnation of his previous mate. He will do anything to have her and to keep her and to make her pay for what she did to him. However, Calliope does not know any of this. She doesn't understand and she doesn't know that she had a previous life. She doesn't know that she's reincarnated. So she is mega pissed whenever um, Cian kidnaps her and takes her to his hell realm and keeps her locked up. So this is very much an enemies to lovers paranormal romance that I adored and I thought Cressley Cole just did fantastically. I don't know if fantastically is a word, but she did it so well. <laughs> I adore this romance. I adore almost all of the books in this series. So if you're looking for amazing paranormal romances, read the Immortals After Dark series already because they are bomb. Next, I have Love in the Wild by Emma Castle. This is a Tarzan retelling that of, that of course I loved. <laughs> this is about Eden and Thorn. So Thorn is our 
Tarzan character. When he was young, he and his parents were on a plane. The plane ended up crashing in the jungle and he was the only survivor and he ends up being raised by a gorilla. And his years later, Thorne is now a grown man and Eden just so happens to be working for National Geographic as a photographer and she goes with a group of people to go take pictures of this jungle area and they get taken over by raiders in the area and everyone dies except for Eden because Thorne ends up rescuing her and taking her to his treehouse. And right when he sees her, he claims her as his mate. <laughs> Thorne only knows how to communicate with gorillas and he only knows that gorillas have mates and so he thinks he should have one and all he's ever known is the life in the jungle and so Eden tries to teach him how to talk, how to speak English, and how to possibly have a life with her. I love this one <laughs> so much. Emma Castle I feel like is an amazing writer and there are some memorable memorable quotes in this. Next I have a contemporary romance for you. I have Just a Heartbeat Away by Cara Bastone. I know that some people are actually turned off by the cover. I don't understand why. A bunch of people have told me they don't like this cover and so they don't want to read the book because they're not attracted to the cover. I like think the cover is so cute but this book is so good. If you're into slow burn romances, and age gap romances, this one is great for you. This one is about Sebastian and Via. So Sebastian and Via met when Sebastian's son Maddie was in her kindergarten class. And while Maddie was in her kindergarten class, Sebastian became a widower. His wife ended up dying and he was really, really, really struggling on how to become a single father. He was kind of neglecting his son, not meaning to literally at all. He just didn't know how to function as a single parent and he felt like he was drowning. He didn't know what to do. He was dealing with grief and then becoming a single father at the same time and he was very lost. And so Via gave him some great advice on how to become a single parent. Like she helped him through this troubling time that he was in. And he has been forever grateful for Via. It is a couple years later though, Maddie is a little bit older, he is still in elementary school, and he ends up going to a new school that Via works at as well. Via ends up leaving that old school and goes to a new school because all she's wanted to do is to be a school counselor. And so she's now the school counselor at this different elementary school that Maddie also goes to in the area. And there she sees Sebastian again, and Sebastian is completely different from when the last time she saw him. He's very much involved in Maddie's life, he's very much involved to the point where he constantly is at Maddie's school to help out the school. And so since Sebastian is always at school, he sees Via very often and they're in constant proximity with one another and they're starting to get to know one another too. However, Sebastian claims he will never ask Via out because I believe he's in his late 30s or early 40s and Via is early early to mid 20s and he thinks that she is too young for him and that she would never want a relationship with an older guy when he has a whole family and he doesn't want to do the 20 year old party scene that's not who he is and he doesn't want to ruin via's life or have her miss out on chances in life when she is young. However, Via is very mature for her age and all she wants is a family. That's what she's wanted. She wants a family. She wants the life that Sebastian already has. And she tries to tell him that and it takes them a very long time to get on the same page, but there is longing and burning for each other and angst and just stolen moments between the two of them that are so swoony. You will get butterflies reading this book, y'all. Cara Bastone is an amazing writer. She did this slow burn so well. I would say check out my Goodreads review if you want to know more about this book and all the specific tropes that it has because it has many of my favorite tropes in it. So yeah, I really enjoy this one and I really recommend it, y'all. Get over the cover. The book inside is beautiful. Next, I have a historical for you. We have Dearest Rogue by Elizabeth Hoyt. Do you want to see a pretty step back? Look at it. So beautiful. Oh, I love this. Okay, this is a historical romance, like I just said, and this is the romance between Captain James Trevelyan and Lady Phoebe. So Phoebe, I believe, is the sister to a duke, if I'm not mistaken. It might be a different title name, but she's the sister to a man who is titled. And Phoebe is also visually impaired. She is blind, and to help her go about society and to protect her, because she's visually impaired and she can't see what's going on around her, her brother has hired James Trevelyan here to be her bodyguard. And so they end up spending a lot of time together, even though Lady Phoebe doesn't really want to because she doesn't feel like she needs a bodyguard. She thinks he's acting like a babysitter. She claims she doesn't need a babysitter, that she can function without him. But in actuality, society in that time period was not very accommodating to those with disabilities. So James is just there to help protect her and guide her through everyday life. And through them spending time together, they end up falling for each other, obviously. Um, James is 
utterly besotted by Phoebe and then Phoebe slowly starts to know the man underneath and starts to understand why this man is so grumpy this is a grumpy sunshine why he is so grumpy and what made him that way and how she can fall in love with him and oh, this is so good this is another age gap romance where the hero doesn't think that he deserves a younger beautiful woman when all that Phoebe wants is James it's all she wants this one was beautiful one of the best historicals I have ever read it was so good. Next, I have my favorite novella of the year. Of course, I've been shouting it from the rooftops. It's King Size by Jessica Kane. Holy crap, Ola. This one is so stinking good. I want to reread it literally right now. I've reread it so many times this year. I don't even remember how many. This is the romance between Britta and Rex. Britta is this princess who at the beginning of the book, her parents end up dying. And so she becomes the queen all in one day because... Her parents die and she assumes the throne and she's utterly heartbroken that the same day she becomes queen is the same day that her parents die. She is utterly crushed. She is crying, she is sobbing and she is alone in her room. She has nobody. Like all she had was her parents. She has nobody. And then Rex is one of her many bodyguards who stands outside her door to protect her. And so he hears her crying in her room and it's like thinking to himself, is nobody gonna go console this woman? Is nobody gonna comfort her in this tragic thing she's going through and no one will volunteer except him so he's like screw it i'll go help her out i'll go comfort her no one else will and if i lose my position what the heck i just want to comfort this woman and so he goes in and comforts her and britta starts to notice him because she's never noticed him before she's never noticed any of the guards before but because of rex's kindness towards her he has many sisters so he's very familiar with how to communicate effectively with women and so britta is totally obsessed with him now <laughs> she is obsessed with him it is just so hot and fun britta kind of dominates uh rex a little bit more even though there is an age gap in here because rex is quite significantly older than bretta this is my favorite novella of the year for sure please pick this one up it's my favorite jessica kane by far and i'm very surprised that not a lot of people have read this one because it is golden i realized i have two car best stone books on this list i just now realized that but um i read this one last month and i want to reread it again we have call me maybe by car best stone this one was honestly just a beautiful piece of art this was a piece of art in an audiobook this is a audible exclusive book if you have audible plus you can listen to this this is a very short three hour audiobook where the two characters vera and um cal end up meeting over the phone because vera is having some technical difficulties with her website she created and so she calls customer service for the website creator company you know um and cal just so happens to be one of those people on the customer service call and they end up talking for like nine hours straight and longer like they end up calling each other again they end up talking they flirt they get vulnerable with one another they fall for each other over the phone and it is so cute this whole book is a piece of work a piece of art there are special effects sounds going on each character has their own narrator if you want like a movie in your ears that is perfect it is this book the end had me squealing like a little girl I loved it. Carbass Stone is becoming one of my favorite authors of all time and I think I might try to read all of her backlist next year because her backlist is not that long so um I love this one and I definitely need to read the next book in the series because there is a another very short audiobook about one of the characters the other characters you met in this series so I loved this. Of course Carbass Stone is a goddess to me now. Of course we need a fantasy romance on this list because of my love for fantasy romance. <laughs> we have Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane. No. This one is so good and I know it's so good and people were telling me for years that this is so good and that I would love it but my brain is so weird to where I put books off that I know I will love <laughs> for some bizarre reason. I do. There's so many books. This is my TBR cart. So many books on this cart I have not read yet even though I know I'm gonna love them and that's how my brain works y'all. I don't know why but like I finally was like what the heck I will get the audiobook and I did and I fell in love with this book. This is the romance between Maddox and Yaven. So Maddox's parents just recently died and he is the le the leader to this clan and his parents recently died and he heard a rumor that this woman named Yaven who is a princess to this other land is the, res is the person responsible for their deaths and so he is out for revenge. However, on his way to go seek this revenge, he finds Yaven trying to look for him. <laughs> I know you want to kill me right now. I am not the reason for your parents' deaths. It is my father who is, and I want to help you unalive him. <laughs> he is very shocked by this, and she knows exactly what to do. She tells him, we need to get married right now 
to pay back my father and by our marriage I will become higher in status and we can go find him and do what we wanted to do go on alive him you know Maddox is very hesitant to trust even obviously because he believes she is the reason that her his parents are dead still like he doesn't believe her and it takes him actually quite a while to believe her a little bit longer than I would have liked however once he starts to believe her he he grovels he grovels, okay? Yvonne in here is one of the most amazing heroines I've ever read about in my entire life. I adore her and I think she is so strong and somebody that I literally strive to be. This fictional heroine is somebody that I strive to be, you guys. <laughs> she was abused very severely by her father, locked in a tower, malnourished. She doesn't look strong. Like, she is going to be the wife to a clan leader when they're supposed to be warrior women, when she does not look like a warrior woman or a queen at all. She is very short, skinny, frail, brittle, boned, walks with a limp um, because her knee was shattered by her father. But man, her persona and the way she holds herself is a queen. Like she is a queen by the way she communicates and talks and stands up for herself and she knows that she is a queen. It doesn't matter the way that I look. It doesn't matter about my disability. I am a queen and you will bow down to me. And <laughs> she is so good. I've been talking about this book for a long time, but I adore this couple. I adore this romance and I'm about to read book two very soon. Okay, <laughs> next we have two books that are in the same series that I read this year that are my favorites. Both of them are some of my favorites of the year. So let's talk about them. So the series that I'm talking about is the Fallen Empire series by Grace Draven. The first book being Phoenix Unbound. <laughs> These two books are in a fantasy romance series. This one I adore so much. This one is about Jolene and Azarion. Jolene is a fire witch who ends up sacrificing herself every year to be burned at a stake to save her um, little village. And Azarion is one of the gladiator slaves in the empire. And so Azarion learns what Jolene is. She's a fire witch and he kidnaps her and takes her back to where he lives. He ends up escaping slavery and takes her, kidnaps her, and they go on a long journey to his village so that he can seek his rightful place on the throne of his little village country clan. I don't remember the terminology for it, but he is the rightful ruler of this area of land. He was sold into slavery by the evil man who overtook him. And so he's out for revenge and he thinks that Jolene can help him with that revenge. This is obviously an enemy to lover's romance. He kidnaps her, okay? It takes her quite a long time to forgive him for what he's done, but their banter in here is honestly golden. Golden. <laughs> I just love Jolene and Azarion, okay? And then that leads me into the second book in this series, which is Dragon Unleashed. I honestly think I love this one even more <laughs> than book one. This one is about Halani and Malakas. You meet Halani in this book. So I recommend reading these books in order, okay? You get the best reading experience out of it. Also the villain for both books is the same person. And I don't think you would hate her as much if you didn't read book one as well as book two. Like if you just jump, if you just jumped into book two, you probably wouldn't hate her as much as you're supposed to, if that makes sense. You have to read what she did in this book to understand why people hate her in the second one. So Halani, she is a magical healer and she has to keep her um, power secret because the empire um, does not like magic and they will kill anybody on the spot who has magic. And so she has to hide her powers. Malachis, however, is a dragon shifter. There is this magical item his mother created for him because his mother was a dragon as well. His mother created for him that links him to his dragon form. However, some thief stole this magical item from him so he is not able to shift into a dragon unless he has the magical item on him. So he's been tracking down this item for a very long time. And so the item he finds out is in the same um, market that Talani is in that day. And then they meet each other at the market, they bump into each other, and they are instantly attracted to each other, but then they go on their merry way, you know? Uh, later in the day, Halani comes across a very injured man, literally about to die. He was attacked by men, and it is Malachis. Malachis is basically a couple breaths away from death, and she ends up saving his life. And to help him recuperate, she brings him with her caravan traveling across the land. She basically nurses him back to health. Malachis is trying to keep this secret of who he actually is, but then he starts falling for Halani, and it's very hard to keep a secret like that from the woman you love, you know? I adore this one so stinking much. One of my favorite characters in here is Halani's mother. Her mother 
It's one of my favorite characters that I've ever read about in my entire life. Her mother's name is Azel, and so when Azel was younger, she ended up getting sexually assaulted by a horrible man, and that led to her being pregnant by Helani. However, she should have never been in that situation because Azel actually is a grown woman who has the brain of a child, and so... Halani is basically the mother in this situation now. Like she cares for Azel. Azel basically has the brain of a seven-year-old and so she doesn't know any better. She doesn't know certain things. And one of my favorite moments in this book is when Malachus meets Azel and he is just the sweetest ever towards her and is non-judgmental non literally at all. And throughout the whole book, like Malachus starts to like care for and love Azel as well as Halani, um, obviously in a more familial way, obviously, but I love their relationship so much. I, I just adore her. I adore her and I adore her relationship with everybody in this book, you know? Anyway, I adore Grace Draven and of course her books had to appear on this list somewhere. <laughs> okay, friends, now we're gonna talk about my top four favorite books of the year, okay? <laughs> this was very hard to narrow down, but also not because I love all of them so much. So first we're gonna talk about, of course, a Ruby Dixon book. This is When She Belongs by Ruby Dixon. If you didn't know, I adore Ruby Dixon. This is my Ruby Dixon shrine behind me. I need more books. Obviously, I've read way more books than those five over there, but her books are kind of expensive because they're indie published, so I gotta save up money every time I want to buy one of her books. This is the romance between Jerrock and Sophie. This is also a book in the Rizdiverse series, so I do recommend that you read the Rizdiverse books before you read this one, as well as the Corsair series before this one. But I'm also not the reading place. Do whatever you want. I just think you would get the best reading experience if you read those before this one. So Sophie, you meet her in one of the previous books in this series, and she gets rescued, and she was a um, human slave towards for aliens. And so she has a lot of PTSD around alien men. Um, because she's been sexually assaulted many times by them, unfortunately. Anyway, she gets in the situation where she's rescued by other humans, but then she gets uh, put on this abandoned asteroid with one of their alien friends named Jerok because the other ship she was on has to go do something and to keep Sophie safe, they have to be put on this asteroid. <laughs> that might be very confusing. But anyway, Sophie is put on this abandoned asteroid with only one other inhabitant um, to keep her safe from something going on. Um, and so Jerak is that other person and he is a very gruff, scarred, broody alien guy who is a survivor of an alien war. So he has like cybernetic appendages, some of them, like I believe part of his legs are or some of his arm. Um, like he's, he's basically an amputee and he has cybernetic limbs to help him walk around. And so he is very gruff and broody very grumpy um and so right when he sees sophie he's like get her out of my face stay away from me you can live on your other side of the asteroid and i'll live on the other side of the asteroid until this is all over i don't have to see you obviously they get into predicaments and they go on adventures and they fall for each other and she slowly starts to break away his walls he becomes a total utter softy for this woman this is one of my favorite ruby dixon books ever and it is is beautiful by the end like this slow burn romance is so good the um times that they have together if you know what I mean are so good <laughs> they're so good I know that not a lot of people have read this book but that needs to change okay that needs to change you need to read it okay <laughs> next I have Nerdgasm by Kimberly Reese this one I can't stop thinking about you guys it is fairly short I think it's on Kindle Unlimited and I think about this book constantly and I've only read it once this year and I can tell you almost everything that happens in this book I remember so much from this book. This is the romance between Addie and Theo. So Theo, when he was growing up, he had a very, very, very severe stutter and he was bullied for it when he was a kid. It is years later, he's now a college student. He's actually also a TA for a class. Um, and his stutter has become better, more functional for him. However, it still pops up every now and then, especially when he's very nervous. And so Theo, yeah, is the TA for this one class. And Addie just so happens to be one of the students in the class that he is a TA for. And the moment that Addie sees Theo, she is like, I want him. I want him. I want that cute cinnamon roll nerdy dude. I want him. And so she goes out of her way to have him. And Theo is very shy. He's an innocent hero, if you know what I mean, you know? And Addie is so patient with him and they take their time in their physical relationship and that is something that I loved. I loved about this book. They're so patient and slow for each other and they're not rushing things at all. They don't rush things at all. As someone who does not rush things at all in that department, I totally, totally appreciate and respect that about this book. This is just so freaking cute, so sweet. A great college romance that almost nobody has read. I know a few of you have read it and I love talking to you about it, but I need more people to read it because this was so good. And like, 
I need more people to read it. I need more people to love it. And Theo is one of my ultimate book boyfriends now because a sweet cinnamon roll hero like him who's nerdy and sweet and caring is what I want in a person, in a man. He is it. He is it. <laughs> We have Always Only You by Chloe Lise. I've read all of Chloe Lise's books in the Bergman Brothers series this year, and I could put all the books on this list. All of the books on this list are were so good. This one and book four are my favorite, uh, With You Forever, just because I connected with the heroine so much because I also deal with uh, an autoimmune disorder that is very similar to hers. Um, so, and she eats gluten-free, which is my autoimmune disorder is celiac disease and so she can't eat gluten and so I was like oh my gosh I see you sister <laughs> anyway this one though I just has a special place in my heart because of the relationship I'm gonna cry because of the characters because of Ren specifically and he is what I want in a partner in a man in a husband I'm like tearing up I don't know why he is my dream man is Ren Bergman <laughs> and just how caring dang <laughs> Just how caring and sweet and understanding he is, is what I want. He is the embodiment of like the perfect man for me other than Theo obviously that I just talked about. Oh, I love him. If you don't know about this book, this is about Ren and Frankie. Um, Ren is a hockey player on a hockey team and Frankie is the social media manager for the hockey team. And she is the grump and he is the sunshine. And Frankie also has autism and she has rheumatoid arthritis. Um, so it's a chronic illness. As someone who also has a chronic illness, I love that representation in here. And my lovely friend Tori over at Novel Life, she has Frankie's chronic illness and she she loves the representation in here. And so Ren has been pining over Frankie for years. He is utterly besotted by this woman, but he knows from talking to her and communicating with her and being friends with her that she's not ready for a relationship. So he's been biding his time and waiting for the time when she's finally ready. However, Frankie's apartment at the beginning of this book or house gets broken into and all the windows, doors, locks are broken and it's not safe to stay in her house. And so Ren tells her like come stay with me so you can live somewhere safe for a little bit until all those things get fixed and you can move back into your house and so she goes to stay with him and since they're in forced proximity with one another they finally have to maybe reveal their feelings that they've had because frankie has also had feelings for ren but she has always felt like she is not good enough for him but oh is she wrong she is very much wrong and i just adore him he has been waiting specifically for frankie he has not been with any other woman he just wants Frankie. That's all he wants. He's been waiting for her because he knows that she is his. And he is so incredibly sweet and kind and accommodating and understanding. For me personally, like I want a man like him. He doesn't feel like Frankie's chronic illness is a burden in legit any way, shape or form. He loves her because of it. Like that is a part of her and he adores her for it. I just love him. I love Frankie too. Their relationship is awesome, but Ren is one of the ultimate fictional men I've ever read about ever. And lastly, we have Actor Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is the last book in the uh, Brown Sisters series and I haven't read this book in quite a while. I read this at the beginning of the year and it has still held a amazing spot in my heart. I could say that the top three could be interchanged, you know, or the top four could all be interchanged for me of my favorite. So like these are my four favorite of the year. So like they could all be interchanged, but you know what? I've been saying that this one's one of my favorites for the entire year. So why not just put it at number one? I don't really care, but the top four are my favorite four of the year anyway. This romance is between Eve and Jacob. Um, Eve is kind of like a trust fund baby. However, she's been very flighty with her jobs recently and her parents are like, hey, we're cutting you off from your trust fund until you can have a steady job for over a year. And so Eve is like, oh crap, okay. And so she goes around driving around after this intervention her family house with her and she comes across the, across his bed and breakfast with a help wanted sign and with an interview sign I think and so she's like hmm, you know what I'll just I'll pop right in to see what's going on and so she goes into this interview not prepared literally at all she does not have a resume has nothing ready and so Jacob notices this and he's very put off by Eve he is the owner of this bed and breakfast and he very desperately needs a chef however he doesn't like Eve when he first sees her she's wearing a weird saying on her shirt a bright shirt she has bright purple hair and she doesn't come with a resume and she is wet from the rain so he's very grumpy she is a sunshine it's a grumpy sunshine romance again if you can't tell i love grumpy sunshine romances and so after this interview that goes very wrong um eve may or may not accidentally hit jacob with her car afterward and she has to stay in the bed and breakfast with him to nurse him back to health after she accidentally hit him with her car and she kind of gets the job anyway because of the accident that she put jacob in <laughs> but uh they spend some time together they get together and their romance is on Honestly, epic I love it uh, Jacob is also somebody who has autism in here and um, that has talked about a lot in here I love the discussion of autism and I just love 
Jacob and how he totally fell for Eve because you can slowly see the progression of him having disdain and then it grows to almost like best friends and then it grows to lovers in here and it is beautiful. I love romances like that where you can see the, see the gr growth, the gradual growth in the different kind of relationship people have and this was beautiful to read about. I adored this so stinking much and hopefully this wins best book of the best romance book of the year for the good choice awards but it's probably not going to knowing the goodreads choice awards y'all <laughs> there you have it those are my favorite books that i have read this year um please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to or if these were some of your favorites as well if you've made it this far into the video leave me a sack of books emoji um to make to let me know that you've made it this far thank you all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all